Namo tassa bhagavato arahato samma sambhutthasa Namo tassa bhagavato arahato samma sambhutthasa Namo tassa bhagavato arahato samma sambhutthasa Bhutang saranang chami damang saranang chami sangang saranang chami Dutiyampi bhutang saranang chami dutiyampi damang saranang chami dutiyampi sangang saranang chami Tatiyampi bhutang saranang gachami Tatiyampi dhammang saranang gachami Tatiyampi sangang saranang gachami So hope that everybody's keeping well and I've come down here to Welawaya to Nikipitiya Monastery which is a very beautiful place and I've just finished a large trip uh, to Anuradhapur which is my favorite area in Sri Lanka. So it was very lovely to go see some potential places there to stay for Vasa. And was asked a question a couple of weeks ago about giving. And it was basically how to give a gift to the Sangha most effectively. So there's many different suttas in which the Buddha describes uh, giving. And there's, there's a few important ones in which he, he lays out the most effective way to give a gift, the way to give a gift that will bring the most benefits to oneself and also ideally to other people as well. So one of the things to understand is that there's actually two sides to the gift. One side is the person who's giving, the other side is the person who's receiving. Both these sides have a role in determining how much merit or how much uh, you might say like a potential for goodness <laughs> one gets back a few years ago there was all this talk about the law of attraction and uh, I didn't know what it was really <laughs> but uh, I heard just a little bit and I gave a talk on it merit is part of the Buddha's law of attraction it's like a, it's like a potential it's a comic potential that can ripen when one directs one's mind in particular ways when one has the merit to achieve something then one's mind will incline towards it and when one's mind, one directs one's mind to it, sometimes mysteriously things happen to, uh, to enable one to achieve that aim. So we call it luck in, in English usually, but in Buddhism it's kama, and it's kama that comes from merit. So there's two sides to the amount of merit that a person will gain from giving a gift. One side is their own intentions. The second side is the intentions of the people that they're giving it to. So the people who they're giving it to should be uh, practicing, for the, practicing for the elimination of the taints. That's the highest way to give a gift. If not, then it's, uh, or have achieved the elimination of the taints. If not, then they should at least, uh, they should at least uh, be good people. If they're bad people, you still get merit but less. If you give to animals, you still get merit but less. <laughs> so there's a sutta which goes through and lists uh, the kind of hierarchy of merit and if you give to a common animal then your merit comes back to you a hundred times. If you give to, I think it's uh, uh, a kind of uh, person who keeps sila very badly, like an immoral person, then your merit will come back to you a thousand times. And I think if you give to a good person it's a thousand times that. And then once it starts getting up into stream enter and once returner it's immeasurable but each one is a hundred times more than the one previous. So one wants to, or one, if one gives a gift to people who are practicing for the elimination of the taints or have achieved it, that's the most merit that one can get. However, it's very, very difficult to tell <laughs> who's actually practicing for this and who, it's almost, impo almost nearly impossible to tell who's achieved it unless they start talking about their personal experiences. So, what the Buddha recommends actually is to give a gift to the whole Sangha if one is a Buddhist. So one gives a gift and one, one thinks, may this be for the entire Sangha. Uh, one, it's more fruitful than giving an individual gift. So there's, there's a sutta where the Buddha's stepmother um, tries to offer him a robe. And I think the commentary says she like 
went and got the cotton herself and then spun it herself <laughs> and got all the threads and then you know wove it her, wove the robe <laughs> had the robe woven and then sewed it for the for the buddha and then the buddha said give it to the sangha so the teaching in that sutta was basically that there's no way that a gift given to a person, just a single person, can equal the merit given to a sangha, given to the whole monastic sangha. Because in the monastic sangha, there's, uh, you know, in the Buddha's time, and even now, there's arahants, there's non-returners, like the once-returners, there's stream mentors, there's people who are practicing for these things, there's good and virtuous people. So giving to the whole sangha as a whole, one gives to all of those people. So. There's no way that giving an individual gift can even match that. So it's good if one gives a gift then to try to give it to people who are practicing for the elimination of taints, have achieved it or on their way to achieve it, uh, and to give to the whole Sangha with the intention, may this be for the whole Sangha. That's how one can make the most merit. Of course, um, one can give to monks individually, um, but the giving to the whole Sangha is the most meritorious. Giving to an individual is less meritorious. So another aspect of it is not just the people that one gives to, but one's own intentions behind giving. So there's a sutta which is called the superior person's gifts, and there's five qualities that help a gift given bring the most merit from one's, uh, from one's own side, from one's own intentions. One is that the gift should be given out of faith. And next, that another is that it should be given with a generous heart. Another is that it should be given at the right time. Another is that it should be given um, respectfully, basically. And the last one is that it should be given without denigrating oneself or others. So all of these have kind of uh, different benefits to them. But the, uh, the most one of the most interesting ones is that one gives a gift without denigrating oneself or others. So it kind of overlaps with giving a gift respectfully. But basically when one gives a gift, one doesn't want to uh, harm oneself actually. So if one is giving things to people who are really disrespectful, then that actually harms oneself. It lowers the amount of merit that one gets. If kind of one gives a gift in such a way that it harms one. You know, one uh, gives money to somebody and they, you know, they use the money to, uh, you know, to you know, do something that will harm one. Or um, one shares a friend with somebody and then they, they try to split one away from their friend. So giving a gift in this way, um, in a way that denigrates oneself, is said to actually lead, basically leads to, uh, can lead to loss, loss of wealth. And all of them have their benefits. If one gives a gift with a generous heart, then abundant measures flow. If one gives a gift respectfully, then the people that one interacts with respect one. Um, one gives a gift at the right time, then gifts come back to one at the right time. So all of these uh, ways of giving a gift have benefits that come back, have a, a correlation in the way that, in the, in the way that uh, merit comes back, in the way that results come back to a person. So another important aspect of giving gifts is that a person gives gifts um, with another intention in mind. So there's kind of various intentions that one can have. In addition to these five ways of giving a gift, one can give a gift hoping, may the results come back to me, like may I go to heaven or may I become rich. <laughs> this is the, the lowest way. And there's a hierarchy that goes kind of up the scale. And the second highest way I think is giving feels good. The highest one is, may this gift be an ornament for my mind, may it be a support for my mind. So in other words, may this gift be a support in my quest for Nibbana. So that is the highest way that one can give a gift, and that actually brings back the most merit. So in striving for Nibbana, one will, in, in having this intention that the gift is an ornament for the mind, one along the way also gets <laughs> more of the material supports that one needs although um, they may come at random times or times that one cannot necessarily predict. So there's the one side for the giver, the one side for the donor. And giving is, for the most part, just based on intention. So one wants to have this kind of generous intention, this intention of faith, all these good intentions, and give with this attitude, may this be for, uh, may this be for the Sangha. <laughs> And may this be an ornament for a mind, a support for my mind. 
Another important aspect of giving gifts is that the gift should be useful. So um, that may come under giving a gift uh, you know, at the right time or giving a gift without denigrating oneself or others. If one gives a gift at a time that it's useless or gives a gift that has no use to the person at all, then that's not the best way to give a gift. I was <laughs> there was one monk who was telling this funny story, uh, the venerable was telling a funny story about how <clears throat> people had heard that you should bring a gift for a monk who teaches. And so one person like brought him a leaf he was, he was commenting on it. He's like, what am I going to do with the leaf? <laughs> it's kind of something sentimental, but that has no practical use. So we want to make sure that the gift that we give is something that's actually useful to the people that we're giving to. And when we give gifts in this way, it's an ornament for the mind. It brightens the mind. It's something that makes a person happy. And it's something that makes a person more independent because you're actually getting a happiness from giving things away, <laughs> not from hoarding them up. And there's always a way that one can give gifts. There's even a sutta in which the Buddha says that even if one were to take over the leftover scraps from one's meal and throw them into a pond and think, may all the beings who are in this pond subsist on this, one would still get merit from that. So depending on how diligent one is, one can turn so many actions, many, many actions, into gifts for other people. And this will come back to one. This will be a potential. This will be merit for the mind. This is the Buddhist aspect of a law of, of attraction, so that when one directs one's mind to things, sometimes one's way is much more smooth. So those are a few thoughts on giving and wishing everybody all the blessings of Dhamma practice.